two. Okay, without much ado, let's uh, begin. Now let's go to our questions. Let's quickly run to our questions. So the first question here for this section for part two says, a rotating uh, sprinkler is placed in one corner of a garden. Now uh, if it has, if it has uh, a reach of eight meter and rotates through an angle of 30 degree, it rotates through an angle of 30 degree, Calculate the area of uh, a garden, not be watered. Calculate the area of the garden that is not be watered. So this area is watered. Give your answer in terms of pi. So this area is watered. We know, right? This area is uh, watered. All this area is watered. But all this area, the sprinkler didn't get to it because it only rotate at angle 30. So this is the whole garden. First of all, we have to calculate the area of the whole garden. Okay, I think this question is not for this question. Is it? Okay, it is. It is. This one is for another question. Okay, it is. Now we're good to go. It is. Okay, so first of all, this is the garden. The garden is a rec rectangle. So we calculate the area of the rectangle. So we say area of rectangle, area of rectangle is equal to length times width length times width. So we calculate the area by saying length times width. So length times width, our length is 12, 12 meter, and our width is 8. So we say 12 times 8, you get 96, right? 12 times 8, we get 96, right? This gives us 96. So the whole guard, the area is 96 meter, meter square. The, remember, this unit is in meter, not centimeter. So it's 96 meter square. That's the area of the whole guard. Now, how do we now find the area that is not watered? You have to find the area that is watered. You subtract it from the total area of the garden. So this one that is water is a sector. So we go to calculate the area of this sector and then subtract the answer from the area of the entire garden. Okay, so that we get the one that the water did it touched. So area of a sector, AS, area of a sector is the same as theta, theta over 360, over 360 times pi r squared. Over 360 times pi r squared. Times pi r squared. Okay, so the area of the sector, we have to calculate the area of the sector before we will be able to, we now subtract whatever we get, we subtract it from the whole gadi. The remaining portion is the shaded portion and is the area that is not watered. So we say area of the sector is, angle of the sector is 30. So we say 30 over 360, 30 over 360, over 360 times, times pi is 3.1. Okay, say so we should leave our answer in terms of pi, right? Okay, we leave our answer in terms of pi, give your answer in terms of pi. Anyway, the first one we did put in terms of pi. So we can swear just solve this, divide the whole answer by 3.14 if you want to live in terms of pi. Okay, so we say point 3.14 times the radius. What will be the radius? So if this is a sector, the radius is definitely 8. It becomes the radius. 8, and this is also 8. And this is the arc length. Okay, so times the radius, which is 8, you say 8 squared. You say times 8 squared times 8 squared. Okay, so 8 squared is 64. First, if we break this one, 0 cancel 0. 3 to 3, you get 1. 3 goes to 36, you get 12. You get 12. So what we have is to multiply 3.14 times 64, because 8 squared is 64. 3.14 times 64, then everything divided by 12. 3.14 times 64, then Whatever you get, you divide by 12, you divide by 12, you get 16.76. We get our answer to be 16, 16.76, 16.76. Okay, this is the area. This is the area that is there. This is the area that is uh, watered. This is the area that is watered. You calculate the area of the sector. This is the area that is watered. Now to find the area that is not watered, which is the remaining shaded part, 
is to say the area of the whole garden minus the area of the water the, the water area minus the water area so we simply say the shaded area or area that is not watered area on water or on shaded is equal to is equal to 96 minus 60.76 96 minus 16 point 76 we get 79 right 79.24 so this gives us 79.24 so we get 79.24 if you want to leave your answer in terms of pi you know what you do you divide by 3.14 what you used before you can divide your answer by 3.14 is that okay if you want to leave it in terms of pi you divide the answer by 3.14 otherwise then you leave it like this okay so this is the area that is uh, that is uh, that is not uh, watered by the sprinkler. Okay, so that's that for that question. So if you got it, and if you live in terms of pi, meaning you divide whatever you get, divide by 3.14, we'll get 25 pi, 25.3 pi. So if even if you write this, if you write this. If you write this, it's okay. If you write this answer, it's okay. But if you want to live in terms of pi, you get 25 point, you get 25 point, 25.3, pi. Okay? So if your answer is 25 pi or 25.3 pi or 25 point, okay, 25.24. So 25.2 is actually 25.2 pi. So if, if you leave your answer like this, you are correct. Uh, this one is also correct, but the structure says you should leave in terms of pi. So you leave in terms of pi. So that's for the question. Now let's go to another question. Here we have two sectors A O B. Now we, let's take a look at the sector A O O is the center of the sector and B. So we have this big sector A O B and COD. Let's take a look at COD. They both have center O. COD. This is a smaller sector and this big one is a bigger sector. This type of question can be used for similarity or can be used to calculate anything in the area of the small sector or whatever or the radius of the small sector. Now AOB, AOB and COD, they share the center O. They have the same center. The area of AOB is three times three times the area of COD. So if we find the area of the big one, AOB, we divide by three, we get the area of the small one. It's three times the size of COD. Calculate the area of AOB. So area of AOB, same like we've just done, same area of a sector. So you say area of a sector, area sector, area S, is the angle, which is given 60, so theta over 360, which is 60 over 360, 60 over 360 times pi r square. The value of pi is 3.14. 3.14. 3.14 times the radius square. What's our radius? It's 15 for the big one. So you say times 50 square. So when you square 50, you get 225. When you square 50, you get 225. You multiply by this. Okay, we can break this one down. This cancels this. 6 here, 1, 6 cancel 6, go into 6, 1, 36 divided by 6, we get 6. So what we're going to do, we square this, we get 2 to 5, 50 square, you get 2 to 5, 2 to 5 multiplied by 3.14, whatever you get, whatever you get, you divide by 6, whatever you get, you divide by 6, 706.5. So you go to get 706. Okay, the whole thing is, uh, if you divide by 6, you get 117, right? 706.5 divided by 6. 706.5, then you divide by 6, you get 117. You get 117.75. Now, this is the area of the big one, 0.75. 
This is the area of the big sector, right? This gives us the area of the big, the whole area, the whole area, right? So that's the first question. So calculate the area of sector AOB. A O B. We should calculate the area of AOB, the whole. Okay, so we've done that. We calculated the area of AOB. Now the next one is the area of the small one. To calculate the area of the small one is easy because it says three times the size of the big one. Okay, this is for question A. Now the B, for the B, is three times. So we divide what we got in A by three. So the area of area of sector COD, COD is simply the area of sector COD is simply divided the what you get, what you get for AOB, which is one one seven point seven five. 117.75 dividing it by 3. Why? Why are we divided by 3? Because we are divided by 3 because the large, the, the big sector is 3 times the size of the small sector. So when we divide it by 3, what do we get? 117.75 divided by 3. What do we get for the area of the small sector? This COD. We we'll get what? We we'll get 39.25. So this will give us 39. This will give us 39.25. This will give us 39.25 centimeters square. Okay? So the small sector, we found the area. So if you found the area, remember, if you get the area of this small one, you'll be able to find the radius. You use the formula of this area of the small sector to get the area of the, to get the radius, right? The C question says calculate the radius of the sector COD. So to find the radius the c part of the question you say radius you get it from the area you say area 39 39.25 39.25 is equal to 60 which is the angle you you put the uh, uh, the area of a sector 60 over 360 60 over 360 is simply one all over six okay if you break it down to the lowest term, you get 1 over 6 times pi r square times 3.14, 3.14 times the radius square, right? Times r square. So we don't know r, we want to find r. Remember, they say we should find the radius in centimeter. Okay? We should find the radius. We don't know the radius. Okay, another way, if this one is 3 times the size of this one, Let's see. What if we divide this radius by 3? By 3. Would we get 5? We're supposed to get 5, right? 5 is of, If this one is... Okay, we can prove it from here and see if that works. So this 0 cancel this 0. We are, this 6 goes here, we get 1. And 6 goes here, we get 6. So we have 6 here. So we cross multiply this. The 6 at the bottom here. Multiply by this 39.25. So 6, if you cross multiply, the 6 at the bottom times 39.25. 39.25 times 6, what do we get? Let's know what we get on the left. 39.25 times 6. We get 235.5. So we get 235. 235. You know, I'm only trying to check if what we said would be correct for the radius. Because I already proposed 5 as the radius. Because if this is 50... And they say this one is three times larger than this. I will divide this one by three. 50 divided by three, I will get five for the radius of this small one. But let's see if that is true. So we get uh, 235.5. 235.5 is equals to 3.14. 3.14 R squared. So divide both sides by 3.14. Divide both sides by 3.14. So if we divide here by 3.14, it will cancel itself, right? So divide this 235.5, divide by, uh, by 3.14, we get R square is equal to, R square is equal to 75. R square is equal to 75. Right? So find the square root of 75. Let's know what R is. Is it 5 point something? No, it's not. 8.7. So, R is 8.7. Okay. So, is 
It's not that way, 8.7. So R is 8.7 centimeter. 8.7 centimeter. So R is 8.7. So you cannot just say divide this one by three, you get the R. Because volume and this one, if you want to do that, you have to do the uh, volume ratio. You have to do volume factor. Okay, you find the cube root of 15. And so on and so forth. Okay, so that's uh, that's that for this question. We're done with this question. Let's go to the last question for today. Let's go to the last question. Say, calculate the length. Calculate the length AG. Okay, look at the look at this. This is a cuboid. A B C D. This is the top cover of this cuboid. A B A B C D. And then we have E F G H. Okay. Now the first one is calculate the length AG. A to G, where is G? All the way from here. All the way. We're going to look for. Let's look for a darker color. Okay. All the way from here with a broken line. So we can see A all the way from here. You draw a line to G. The top left corner to the bottom right corner. Is a very long one, okay? The top left corner to the bottom right corner, to the bottom right corner, okay? So this is so you cannot do it if you don't find this diagonal. If you don't find this uh, diagonal, right? We know here eight. We know here we can find we can find here, right? We have to find here first this diagonal. We have to find this diagonal EG. If you get EG, you'll be able to get. Now let's begin to see what works. If here is eight, if here is eight, right? If here is four, here is four. So this is a, a right angle triangle. So you can redraw it out. You can redraw it out. You can redraw it out. Okay, here's E. Here's E. And here is uh, H. Here you have angle 90. This H. And this G. So we have to find, we have to find this diagonal first. Because if you don't get this diagonal by using Pythagoras theory, and you remember here e, H, G is 8. Why this one is uh, E H is four. E H is four. So we have to find E G first. Okay. If we find E G, then we'll be able to find this becomes this becomes uh, another ninety degree. We'll be able to find the hypotenuse using this this value. If here is five, here is also five. Here is also five. If here is five. If this place is five, then this place is also five. Okay, it's like the height is also five. So, uh, for us to be able to find AG, we must find this diagonal first, EG. So to find EG is to say EG, which is this side. I can call it Y. Okay, I can call it Y. I say Y square is the hypotenuse. Y square is equal to four square plus eight square. So four square, you get 16. Eight square, you get 64. Okay, plus eight square. So 16 plus 64, what do we get? 16 plus 64, is it 80? We get 80. So find the square root of 80. Let's find the square root of 80, eight point something, close to nine, eight point nine. So we get y, we get our y, if you take the square root of this side, you get y to be 8.9. 8.9. Okay, so here is 8.9. Now that we know this place, 8.9, then we can find ag. We can find the ag they're asking us to look for. This length ag. Because now we have another right angle triangle in, the, in, the, in this one. We have another right angle triangle. A bigger one. Okay. Here, here is five. A, E. 
this is A, this is E, okay, this is A, the va this A, this is the height, this is the E at the bottom, and this G is here. So the A, G, they're asking us to find, now it's very visible to us, this hypotenuse. Now you know this is 8.9, you just found this one, E, G, you found the E, G to be 8.9, and here is 5, so you find this one, we can call it, this A, G, they ask us to find, we can call it X. Okay, so say, using the same Pythagoras theorem, using the same Pythagoras theorem, you say 5 square, S square is equal to 5 square plus 8.9 square. S square is equal to 5 square, 5 square is 25, 8.9 square is 80. 5 square plus, plus 8.9 square. Okay, so we get 25 plus 80. Can you add 25 plus 80? You will get 105, right? S square equal to 105. Find the square root of 105. Find the square root of 105. We get 10 point what? We get 10.223. So that's our AG they're asking us to find. Our AG is what? 10. 10 point, point two three centimeter. Okay, that's what the question wants from you. 10.2. 10. Point two. Ten point two three centimeter. That's your AG. Is that okay? So that's the that question. We've uh, answered that question. We've answered that question. Now let's take a look at this question. Is it calculate the angle between the line AG and the plane EFGH? Where's the plane EF? Look at the plane EFGH and AG. Where's the angle between the plane here? Okay, meaning this angle. They're asking, C is asking us to find this angle. So I can call it angle theta. You call it angle theta. So it's asking us to find this angle. So we can say opposite of our adjacent, which is tan. You know you know the three sides. You can use any of the Sokatoa. So you can use sine, which is uh, opposite of our hypotenuse. You can use cosine, adjacent of our hypotenuse, up to you. Okay, so we can use tan theta, toa, tan theta, tan theta is equal to, the opposite is five, and the adjacent is 8.9. So if we divide this, opposite of the angle is 5, and the adjacent is 8.9. So if you divide this, you get a decimal number. So what do we get? We get a decimal number. So we say tan theta will be equal to 5 divided by 8.9. We get 0. Point what? We get 0 0.5618. 0 0.56, okay, 0 0.5618. 0 0.5618. So theta is the tan inverse. Find the tan inverse. Find your shift or second function, tan inverse of this value, and tell me what your angle is. So we get 29. So our angle is approximately 29 degree. So we get 29 degree. That's the angle between AG and the, the, the last base, EFGH. That's the angle, okay? So I think uh, for that question, it's a calculate the angle, calculate the angle between the line AG and the plane EFGH. Calculate the angle between the line AG and the plane AD. Let's play A D A D H E A D H E the line A G A G is here. Does it pass through this plane? Does the line A G calculate the angle between the A G 
and the play A D A D H E. Okay, this is zero. Okay, I think they just want to know whether you know what you're doing. This is zero. Because this line A G did it pass through this plane? Does it pass through this plane? We're talking about this plane A D H E. Does it the line pass through there? No. The line doesn't pass through there. Okay? You only pass through this plane A, B, F, E. If they've asked for that, we would have found this angle here. A, B, F, E. Because this line passes through that plane. It also passes through this one. So, it passes through this, only this and this. So, this one is zero. So, I think uh, they just want to see whether we know what we're doing. Now, the last question, but not the least question, is a pyramid. The last but not the least question is a pyramid. Now, let's take a look at this pyramid. This is a rectangular base pyramid. This is a rectangular base pyramid. Is this square? It's rectangle. Here is 3 and here is 6. It's a rectangular base pyramid. So, and the height, we can calculate the height, right? We can calculate the height. If you want to get the height, we can calculate the height. Now, to calculate the height, it depends if the question wants us to calculate the height. The diagram on the right shows a right pyramid where A is vertically above X. A is vertically above X. Calculate the length BD. BD. Yes, B, this one. Calculate that's the diagonal of this one. So you use a right angle triangle, use Pythagoras theory to calculate BD. Okay? So to calculate BD, this is 6, this is 3. Okay? Then you, this is BD. So here is 6, here is 3. Use Pythagoras theory, C square, C square plus 3 square. C square will get 36, 3 square will get 9. 36 plus 9, what do we get? Huh? 45. Okay, square root of 45. So we get that this one to be 6.7. BD to be 6.7. 6.7. Okay. So the BD is 6.7. Now, if you know the BD, this, is, uh, this will make 90 degrees with this place. So if you divide the BD by 2, you get the value here. Divide this BD by 2, what do you get? You get 3 point what? 3 point... 3.35 or 3.4 in one decimal place. Three point three five, right? So I just say three point four. So we get this one, and we know this one, which is the hypotenuse, is seven centimeter. We can find the height. Now we can find the height of this shape. We can find the height. So first we find this diagonal. We divide by two. We get half of it. We get half of it, and then. We bring out the right angle triangle. Let's bring out the right angle triangle. So if we bring out the right angle triangle, we have the height here. We have the hypotenuse here, which is seven. And we have the 3.4 here. 3.4 is here. 3.4 is here, seven is here. Then the height we're looking for is here. The height we're looking for is here, okay? The height we're looking for is here. So we find the height by subtracting this one. Several square, which is 49. Several square minus 3.4 square. Minus 3.4 square. So several square is 49. 3.4 square, what do we get? Eleven point five six. Eleven point five six. So subtract for eleven point five six from forty-nine. What do we get? 37.44. Now find the square root of that number. 
37.44. If we take, if we find the square root, we get 6 point something, right? 6.1. So we get 6.1 as the height centimeter. This is the height of this one, 6.1. The height is 6.1 of this pyramid. The height of the pyramid is 6.1. They ask us to find the length BD. We've done that. Okay. Calculate the angle between A, B. They didn't even ask for height. Why were we doing that? They just asked us to calculate the length BD, the whole length, which is 6.7 centimeter. BD is 6.7 centimeter. Okay supposed to stop here for this one now the next question is to calculate the angle between a b yes a b a b the angle between this a b and c b yes our c c b c b e d c b e d c this A, B, right? Line A, B, and C, B, E, D. Okay, so that means this angle. Here is 90, right? Here we already know here is 90. 90 degrees. So let's calculate this angle. This angle. So if you find this angle, here is 7. We bring this one to this place. Or we bring this, okay, we bring this one up to here, what we are doing just now. Let's find this angle. Because this is the angle, because this is the angle to make this one, this angle theta, up to this place, up to here. Okay, so let's find this angle. So to find that angle, we say, if here is our seven, here is our height. So we are talking about this angle. We're talking about this angle. So to find the angle, this angle, this is our height. See, this is what we brought out. These are hypotenuse, 7. These are height, 6.1. And this is the line that is going to this place. So we just use this one out, okay? So it becomes, it depends what you want to use. You can say sine, the B part of the question. You can say sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So you can use sine, sine theta, or you use cosine, anyone. So this time, since we used tan before, let's use sine. Sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, which is sine theta is equal, the opposite is six. We already found the height. So let's make use of it since we decide to find it. 6.1 over seven. So 6.1 divided by seven, what do we get? 6.1 divided by 7, we get 0 0.8714. Okay, find the sine inverse of it. 0 0.8714. 0 0.8714. So if we find the sine inverse of it, we get 60.6, .6, which is approximately 61. Okay, so theta will be approximately 61 degree. The angle this one make with uh, is approximately 61 degree. Okay, these are the type of questions you find in IGCSE. Okay, here is no part of it. Okay, let me erase so that you just. Yeah, this one is no part of it. Okay, the angle is from this one to this plane to any line that passes through this plane, okay? Because they say we should consider the plane C, B, E, D with line A, B. So line A, B make an angle with this, you know? So this is the angle we look for, which is 61 degree, that's 61 degree. Okay, so with this, we've come to the end of our today's class. Thank you for joining us.